There are hundreds of insurers in Europe, but you only hear of a few when it comes to innovation in the insurance industry. And today we are visiting one. Valois Insurance in the beautiful, but today, rainy city of Basel. That's why I'm so excited to be here today. I'm going to talk to Jean-Michael, to Alberto and Philip, and of course Roberto, who is responsible for the communication over here. I'm really excited to talk to these three people out of three reasons. Why? Because they symbolize uh, one person went outside the company to innovate the company. One person is responsible for the internal innovation. Another person is responsible for the cooperation with startups. And they all have some lessons learned and tips to share. And I'm really excited about this. So let's have some fun and let's have a look how uh, Baloas is doing here. So I listen to this. I'm scouting digital and tech trends around the world in order to bring it to you. And I've helped numerous companies to set up ecosystems of digital products and services and to increase their reach with attention hacking. When we agreed on this trip, I was really excited. Baloas, for me since years, belongs to one of the few that does not only communicate about innovation, but actually has a track record on corporations, on new products, on new processes, on new business models and things. Hey guys, uh, we are here at uh, Baloas Insurance in the beautiful but rainy city of Basel. Um, we are here together with three experts that represent a little bit the three strategic approaches of Baloas to the innovation in the insurance sector. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit uh, what is your uh, role at uh, Baloas? I work in the Group Strategy and Digital Transformation Unit at Baloas. I'm acting as an innovation manager, which means I'm primarily dealing with strategic issues on how we should innovate, how we should drive the company forward. And that's fun? It's been. Uh, I'm actually, I was just telling Philip that, uh, Alberto, sorry, that I, I'm coming in here and it's like, wow, clear the head and because it's just, it's a lot. There's so many different topics flying around. It's, it's awesome, but sometimes you just need that extra moment to, you know, settle and, and find your center again if you want. Okay, to hang around with us is free time, and I understood that. Okay. Well, it feels like it, ah, yeah. Okay. My name is Philip. I'm working 24 years for Bolos, so I'm pretty old school. Huh? I'm responsible, responsible for household and building, product management, and since two years, I'm more new school. Uh, and work with uh, startups and intertechs and we launched uh, 15 products in the last uh, two years. Hi, I'm Alberto and uh, since March this year I'm CEO of the Corporate Startup Monday. Yeah, but I heard that you spent some time working at Balois before that. Yeah, actually uh, it's my 11th year for Balois but I've been as well in 11 different jobs. Ah, okay, so, so you have left the mothership a little bit. Exactly. So now I'm trying to, like a satellite and a spin-off, be productive uh, in a startup. So we have three roles with three different strategic approaches, but a lot of harmony here. So where are actually the differences? The difference? I, I bring customers. <laughs> because I have, you know, that's I think the difference between Inchitex and, and a company like Balbos who is with the startups together, I think even faster than uh, Intratex are, because I don't have to get some money. I, I can start with the Intratex and we pick the Intratex carefully. Yeah. Uh, everywhere where we see that we are maybe mediocre or only good, we take a, a brilliant startup that can less or, <laughs> but, but only this. Uh, As a company with 150 years, you're good, but you're not brilliant. Eh? And so we, we screen the market, where do we find startups that can not this, but, but, but that, and that's brilliant. That's our approach to, <coughs> to do. And then I have, uh, behind I have 700 uh, salesmen and women who, uh, who spread my products into the market, and not only online. We have more success with offline, although th these are online products. And it is a pretty unfair uh, advantage we have against uh, other intro techs, that we have a brand 
<laughs> maybe not a sexy brand, but we have a brand for security and we have salesmen and saleswomen. Who do you say? Uh, are you a little bit jealous um, for the sales force? Uh? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it has really two sides. I love the freedom that I have and uh, the agility and the speed I can do and switch and turn around my ideas. On the other hand, it's really, really early stage. Okay. So nobody knows me on the market or, or just a few people. Yet. <laughs> we will be the next uh, Uber. <laughs> That's all they will. <laughs> no, but to be fair, there, there's also the power of a big company missing, of course, in my startup. And it's a high risk also for the management of, of Ballos, for example, because it, it's not sure that I bring customers. It's not sure that my startup will succeed. And still, I need money. Yeah. So that's a totally different, uh, different story than relying on, on a deep core and a well-functioning organization and then try some little fast boats. And with me, it's, it's a totally different story. Why do you guys think uh, it is necessary to innovate and not to continue the way as we have always done it before? What is your personal take on it? Well, I mean, you can just look at it from the perspective as a, as a private citizen, if you want. Things have been changing so quickly, digitalization. Of course, it's a buzzword. But you don't have to look far just to see it happening around yourself. And you take that back into a, into a corporate environment and you have to realize you need to do something. And so things are changing more quickly. So we ourselves have to be able to adapt more quickly. So a little uh, survey. Um, how many of you guys watch mainly Netflix or uh, Amazon Prime compared to regular TV? Well, all right. <laughs> we see the old three, guy, huh? three quarters. Netflix has no football, so <laughs> that's true. Okay, it's, uh, just half. Um, I watch uh, uh, the regular TV when uh, Hamlet plays. When Hamlet plays. When Hamlet do you watch it on the zone or do you watch it on a regular TV? I watch. Uh, I watch it um, on a regular TV. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. I'm. I'm sorry. I. Yeah. Because it's the second week, there is no the zone. <laughs> <laughs> what changed over the two decades you have been working here? Yeah, it's uh, changed a lot. 20 years ago, it was a regulated market with every company had to have the, the same products, the same prices. And now about the digitalization, I think the insurance was in a, in a crisis two years ago because there were coming some intro techs, disruptive, etc. And you saw the risk. Uh, we take the risk. We, we start working with, with intro techs. And now we see more the, the chances you can, you can reach or you can have. With the, uh, with the digi digitalizations and not the risk. In, in your opinion, what d changed over the last years and what made you decide uh, to you go through the external approach? Yeah, so I think what changed really are the, the requirements and the needs of customers. And in the last decades, there were so many new inventions and, and the, we as a private person, we're just used to, to much simpler, much in, more intuitive things and so you can't just stay the same and, and offer the same insurance products or whatever to your customers. Uh, and why I, I, I've gone external is to, to combine the advantages of having a big company like Ballos in the back, but still be agile enough to, to try things out, to, to be innovative, to when something does not happen or does not work out, then to just to, to try it again. So I did not want to be captured in internal processes. So that's why I, I went external. So what was cool is that when, when they started at F10, at the Startup Incubator and Accelerator, where we, we launched Monday as a, as, a, as a startup, they started with a prototype. Yeah. And I saw them like one and a half weeks into the program. And I was like, so how's it going? And we're like, well, you know, we changed the product five times already. <laughs> uh, I mean, this is this is something we could never have done internally. Just to even the mindset to be this open and just you know, let's go out there, talk to the customer, and and see. And this this pace, this agile approach, uh, that's why we do that. Mm. That's the leverage, really. How are your approaches differently? Um, uh, well, you you are external, you are internal. Um, you too, with a, you cooperate a lot with startups. So. Um, um, do you have to, some stories to share where you said that the people are listening, they could learn something from that or that's something that surprised you in the last two years? Well, I'll, I'll take uh, Alberto as, as an example then because when we had a decision taken, uh, we have a, a cool prototype, we want to pursue it and, and we put it into an external incubator to give it the freedom it needs. The challenge was how do we staff the team? Yeah. Because we wanted to do it internally, we wanted to leverage the know-how we have, the capabilities, but how do you get the people out of the job? 
Yeah. And, and so we have essentially leveraged existing structures. So we introduced a career mobility program so that our employees can change jobs temporarily. And instead of try, kind of trying something new and forcing the superiors to give away resources, we said, look, we've established such a program, let's use it. So we literally had a job ad internal, uh, kind of, I don't remember the title, looking for the next internal startup. Uh, apply. So this is what we're looking for, this is the time frame, and so we leveraged existing structures. And I think that's, that's kind of one of the learnings. You can't do everything new at once. Okay. Leverage what you have and add something that you need, like the key new thing that you need. Do you agree or do you say uh, these eternal guys? Uh... <laughs> Absolutely. And another reason why I went externally is that I, I didn't want to constrain my idea finding with, with some insurance product. Yeah. So I wanted to be to be free of insurance more or less because I think in the future and to be honest for now insurance is not the main topic of someone a private customer of a, of a company so we have to think of of the real main pains and main challenges uh, customers be it private customers or, or company customers do have so I wanted to try a new approach and to leave the insurance company behind and to then find a solution for the real problems customers have and I thought it would be better to, to try it out and to talk to customers externally. And what was your biggest lesson learned uh, while starting this uh, exciting journey? The idea that uh, Jean-Michel mentioned, so the idea which I got and uh, with the assignment to, to make something out of it. Yeah. Well, the first thing in, in the first week uh, I did was um, asking customers yeah. um, on the street and they told me, I don't really care. <laughs> about that idea or that prototype. It, I wouldn't pay for it, I wouldn't use it. So that's why we changed our idea in the first two weeks uh, five times. Uh, because I think the ideas that come out of the expertise of internal employees do already have the bias mm -hmm. of internal processes yeah. and internal <coughs> thoughts. So it's, it's really, really important when trying something new to, to ask others. And uh, what is your favorite story from working together with a, with a startup and your work there? As uh, Alberto said, it's all about uh, asking customers. Because we do a uh, product so fast, we don't ask customers. We go, go live and then we co-create the products. Three weeks in 2017, before the media conference, we had a call with Jean-Michel, with uh, Cascon, with uh, uh, then Snapshot, now Picture. Yeah. And then we talked about a use case and uh, he said, uh, I can have a photo recognition with bike, with animals, etc. And I said, hey, Switzerland is watch. Switzerland is, or Basel is, uh, is as well for watch. And so we launched it, uh, or we had the idea, and we knew we have a, um, a strict a, deadline. A or strict what? deadline, that is three weeks. Nobody was uh, informed, or also Gert, who is the group CEO, and uh, Michael, uh, who is uh, CEO of Switzerland. And really five minutes before the media conference started, the, the product was definitely done and, and went uh, really well. So that was really a roller coaster. And when you, uh, when, when you work then with startups, we didn't see them. Uh, uh, Enrico from Picture, I, I've never seen. Eh? Only phone, only WhatsApp, only uh, whatever, uh, emails. And that was a, a huge uh, bust as well for, for me and for us. Because in three weeks, till two in the morning, you work, you work, you work, uh, and then it, it, it works well, that's, uh, that's a great thing. What was interesting there is, if you want to do it so quickly, the, the existing setup was not permitting. I mean, how do you get money to do something within three weeks? And so it was yeah. my boss who said, we have budget, let's do it. Like, we just try it. And what's happened actually, that was the first time. And since then we've launched, uh, this year actually more than one pilot with a startup uh, a month just by realizing, oh, if we have the budget available to go to move more quickly, we can actually leverage something. And it's, yeah, that was kind of the first mm -hmm. case where we thought, but this, this could really work. What I would also love uh, to talk about, uh, since you have, you have three experts here, to talk a little bit of, um, about trends in the insurance industry and what you think um, is going to happen and what you think is important. Um, what, what do you think is the, the biggest trends in the next years um, concerning the customer <coughs> but also the, the industry itself? For me it's uh, API management and corporate. Yep. And the other things, I'm not pretty sure the AI thing is, is not so, uh, it's, it's small, eh? but the API uh, thing, because when we come together with uh, big partners with Dreamtof two years ago, what can we add for them and what 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, for us, yeah. At the end, it's always a, a small, cool insurance touch or product at the other. It's like a furniture company, it's like UPC with a telecom provider, everywhere the same. And this is what I think is, is the most important thing. It's maybe not insurance, but the touch of security. Okay, if you would have said blockchain, we would have broken off this uh, conversation here. Mm, <laughs> just kidding. So it's the it's API, APIization um, of the insurance industry a little bit. Do you think insurance industry has a chance to become the platform, the master <coughs> API, or are we just building on other platforms? What do you think? Uh, blockchain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think insurance is and will not be the number one problem or point in mind of, of any customer. So I think insurance has to build themselves around the needs, be it leisure or whatever. What I found pretty interesting was when you listen to Spotify, then you don't have any data usage. Yeah. So they collaborated with, with huh, I didn't know that. Swisscom. Uh, here in Switzerland? Yeah, there's sp uh, special deals. Mm -hmm. We need this in Germany too. Yeah. Well, actually, I don't think that this will be long lasting yeah. because I think in the future everybody will have a flat rate. So it really doesn't matter if you have it for free or not. Yeah. But still, the idea behind collaborating with a totally different mm. kind of branch <coughs> or industry like uh, music and, and Swisscom data. And I think insurance products for now are separate from the real problems. And I think in the future they are combined when buying a car it should be included without even knowing uh, that just to have the security that it will be safe. So you see the bundling and unbundling of insurance products and the bundling with non-insurance events like buying a car is an event you think uh, APIization. Now we have a strategy expert here. What does a strategy expert think is the big <laughs> trend uh, in the future in your opinion? Well, I'm not allowed to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I very much sympathize with what Alberto has been saying, and also actually Philip said one was kind of the more inside view that we have to change as a company. And it's a huge challenge to get that APIization or the modularization of our existing business so that we become an easy partner. People want to work with us because we are fast, you know, it's easy, simply safe, uh, as we would say internally. And what, what Alberto has been saying, like going towards the customer and the kind of the outside view, many people just don't care that much about insurance. So how can you position yourself as somebody who's still relevant? Well, of course, now ecosystem, next buzzword. Yeah. But what kind of right to play do we have as, a, as an orchestrator, say? Mm. And I've been with Balois within the insurance sector only for a bit more than one and a half years. And what surprises me is insurance is everywhere. So we've been talking to different industry, to different firms, to different kinds of customers. So there's kind of a natural position, similar with banks, where you, you have touch points with everybody and at so many different points. So there is an argument to be made that we could have a natural role as an orchestrator. So far, at the same time, I don't see it yet. So I don't see any insurance um, company really establishing themselves as the orchestrator around some service for a customer. But what you say is there is an opportunity as to become the platform. I think there is an opportunity. Okay. And more, or let's put it as the, the right to play. You know, you, yeah. there could be a credibility as, as an insurance saying, as Balois saying, we could do that. The path getting there, it's, it's not that easy. But then again, if you look at most ecosystems that have arisen recently, it, it's, I don't think it ever was straightforward or easy. Or there's very rare exceptions. But if you aspire to be the next Apple, you know, of course, we go for Uber, but yeah. think big. but. We have to be realistic. Uh, what I really like about this answer is that um, it's a little bit like let's have also the right not only to play but the right to dream. Nice. Um, so if you think about a situation where the insurance industry, and why do I well, want to emphasize this, is because right now digital transformation is always uh, played as a defensive topic. Uh, we are trying to defend our revenue, we are trying to defend uh, our employees, we are trying to defend, but actually um, digital transformation should be a topic for offense, for um, let's talk about growth, let's not talk about about 1% growth, let's talk about 35% growth. And that's why I really like, if you would imagine a situation where an insurance ecosystem could play an vital part in the role of, uh, of, of the people and the customers out there, how would you uh, describe this? If you could dream and you know forget all sure. the hurdles of practicality. So it's actually, just as a side note, it's so, <laughs> it's so funny that you go about this this way because last week we had a, an internal event and one of the, the slogans was, I know it's hard, I know it might be possible, but if you could do it, how would you do it? Oh. So that was almost um, as if I was still there last week uh, uh, listening. Is to that her. good or is that bad? <laughs> it was good. So I, I'll take it as a positive. Uh. Eerie, but positive. Mm -hmm. uh, no, so what we've been trying actively is the, the mobility ecosystem and the, the home ecosystem. 
And what I see as the, the central question that we have to answer is really what is the problem that the customer has that we're trying to solve. So if we want to dream big, let's take home as yeah. an example. I would love for the customer to, at a specific moment in his, in his life, say, um, you're, do you have kids? Yeah. So son, daughter? Two-year-old daughter. Okay, well, move forward in time, 16 years or so, uh, your daughter will move out. I know it's hard to imagine now, but Unbelievable. Impossible. I, at some point you will hope <laughs> she will, I'm sure. And it would be wonderful for us if at that moment she thinks, I'm moving out. So there's so many questions popping up. Who will I go to? And if that, at that moment it's Balois, and it doesn't have to be all end-to-end -end ourselves, but if it's just the touch point is Balois, kind of emo uh, the emotion is uncertainty, you know, as Philip said, we're trying to make it safe, so there's plenty of difficult questions when you move out. And if you just go about it and think, I'll go there. Just like nowadays, I, I want to Google something, so I go to Google. If, and if you manage to get that moment, that emotional touch point, that would be. That would be the dream. But isn't that also a little bit a game changer from having sales plans and, and having say, okay, we're going to sell 80,000 accidents so what? this year? <laughs> uh, you said it yourself, digitalization, yeah. it's, it's an opportunity. Yeah. Um, I think we have to evolve. We, that's the, the hard part is we also have to make sure the, the, the old school business is there because we need it. If you, if you take away our cash cow, all the innovation is dead. Yeah. We need to sustain both. But with this... Um, fat and healthy cash cow in hand, we can go ahead and try things. So I think we have to dream big. So what are the things you guys are trying next? Can I say uh, that's what... <laughs> that's <laughs> see, now you see, you ask us where we have the conflict. That's why he's an innovation manager and I'm an execution, execution manager. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's, uh, you have to uh, have uh, some thoughts about what is, is in 10 years. Um, two years ago, I dreamed, dreamed a lot. Eh? Now I'm so realistic, you, you have to start. Anyway, but you, ha you, have, you should have the two sides like Jean-Michel and me and how we get there. Maybe not like when you build a, an ecosystem in 10 years with a helicopter or whatever, but to, to come from the path to the future. And that's what I try to do. And because I have such, so much uh, cool cases on the table, I ended to dream about what is in f five years. Because I dream now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, he's the worst. He's, we have so much work because of him. <laughs> so we have the full range of um, how long did people work at a traditional insurer. We have uh, you here with uh, one over one year and you 24 years. So next year a big anniversary is coming up yes. and you in the middle with 11 years. Um, I think this is uh, quite symptomatic for the insurance industry. Um, so how does the digital transformation and your plan to reach a lot, how does this um, work with the, with the colleagues and the employees and the different generations of, of people working here? I guess we go by seniority, right? <laughs> <laughs> by age, eh? yes. Yeah. Well, we have a lot of uh, the startups are between 25 and 40 years old. Internally, my two product manage managers who launch with me the products, the old and the new, uh, are 25 and 28. But when it comes to serious problems uh, and, and we enter the war room, uh, the average is maybe 55. Okay. And f 55 because there are so many experts who are uh, very experienced uh, that can help and want to help because they see uh, we want to do something for the, for the company. And it's not only the 25 uh, year old uh, UX uh, enthusiasm, it's, it's more about, or, or as well about the, the real, the, the, the old school uh, <laughs> employees that, that helps us a lot. And how do they feel? Because I heard and we saw already a lot has changed over the last years around here. I th they feel great because they, they work in a, in, a, in a great story <coughs> and I think uh, you have to do, uh, when you are successful, there are a lot of people uh, you have to uh, take on the, on the journey and they help you when you are not so successful. Yeah. And that's what I think the Bolos uh, culture is, is really unique in, in the way we, we work together and the, the way we, uh, we party together. Okay, party, important topic. <laughs> so how does it look like? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but what's interesting is the, the change you mentioned. There's been yeah. a lot of change and digitalization leads to a more collaborative form of, of work. And in your old role, now I don't know if you remember before you went... Do I remember? <laughs> before mm. you went full startup, you were in kind of compensations and benefits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we did change things to take that into account, right? Exactly. So 
Before I, I became CEO of, of the startup, I was um, in the group HR rep responsible for performance management and, and compensation topics. And what we did change, uh, starting from this year, so now 10, 10 months old, is that we skipped uh, individual goals and uh, laid more focus on, on team effort, for example. Okay. So that, that because we really believe in, in the collaboration and in the power of collaboration when we work as a team and when we have the same goal as a team and when we have the same vision as a team and not only just uh, Elle Bögele. Yeah. <laughs> El elbow. Yeah. <laughs> Fighting with the elbows to only reach the individual goals. Yeah. yeah. So there we did a really, really big change also in, in, in the mindset. It's not, of course, yet done, but it's on, 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 on the way there. But what I would like to, to add to seniority and age. Um, I started externally with my startup, but yeah. nevertheless, I did ask uh, for help and support from lots of uh, uh, employees and what I and, and colleagues. And what I found was that everybody, if they would have uh, a lot to do or not, everybody was really, really nice and friendly and really tried to help me. Uh, but what I also figured was which kind of people are best in which phase of a startup. Okay. And it does not have anything to do with age, but I think with seniority. So how long have you been in the internal processes? Mm -hmm. And in the starting phase of my startup, um, I've rather gone to people who were not as long in the insurance industry or at Ballos uh, to, to generate really new and different ideas. But then I've, I've gone to to the more senior um, employees and colleagues of Ballas to, to find the answers to, to, to the questions when it comes to, okay, now, now let's do it. Uh, what, what does it mean? Let's, let's put, sorry, put it on the ground, etc. So I think <coughs> it's, it's very important to ask the right persons in a different uh, phase of, of the startup. Mm -hmm. My last question to you guys is, um, if you look uh, to the next 24 months, uh, personally, professionally, uh, or um, for the Baloise, um, and you would describe what is your wish for the next 24 months in three words, what do you say? And while we go again, you can come, Philip first. <laughs> ah, the sturdy guy. <laughs> Pretty easy. Happy customers, happy uh, uh, colleagues. Three words? Yeah, well, short, yeah. Keep it up. The young people. Keep it up, okay. <laughs> Keep it up. For me, it's a um, glimpse of a unicorn. <laughs> great, great. <laughs> hey guys, it would help us a lot if you could hit the subscribe button down there and to make us also grow here on YouTube. Thank you very much. Yeah.